well. Go ahead and start off with a hymn. Come on. Jesus. Jesus Decided. 
my George. Only if it's your testimony, sing it with me one more time like you mean it. Come on. Yes, Lord. The road gets rough. Yeah. <laughs> and the going gets tough. And the hills are hard to climb. Yeah. Said I started out a long time ago. Come on, Chris. Minister to us, man. Let the Lord use you, man. Come on. Yes, Lord. you 
uh, in some way on tonight. Amen. So tonight, if you will, if you have your Bibles, uh, if you have your Bible apps, I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 7. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 7. Amen. Look what the word of God says. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. The grass withered and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Let us pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all the many blessings that you've allowed us, Lord, to experience and to receive. We come tonight, Lord, praying that you would use your servants, Lord, to bless these, your people. And I pray you would prepare the hearts of your people to receive, Lord, what will be shared. And I pray to God that they're blessed, dear God, tonight, even for the rest of their life. We thank you, we love you, we honor you, and we lift up your holy name. We thank you, Father God. Have your way. We pray you be in the midst of everything we do and say. It's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. And all that love the Lord said, amen, amen, amen. Thank God for your own tonight, amen. And we praise God, amen, for this opportunity to share, amen, with you what God has placed upon upon our heart to share. Um, uh, I thank God tonight. Um, on last night, amen, um, we had our St. Mary, we had our church meeting, and what a blessing uh, it was. We had a great time in the Lord, amen. We came together as one, amen. We went over some things, amen, and we just, we just fellowshiped one with the other. And at the end of the meeting, I shared this particular scripture, and I was led, amen, to just expound upon this scripture just a little more, amen, as it relates to our Christian walk, amen, praise the Lord. And I pray to God, amen, that you are richly and truly, truly, truly blessed, amen. Uh, when we take a look at this particular passage here, amen, we will find, amen, we find Timothy, amen, we find Timothy, God's servant, amen, who the apostle Paul has pretty much taken under his wing. And what has happened, now the apostle Paul is encouraging him because he has a great challenge ahead of him. Now watch, I want us to all understand that when we take a look at the passage, I don't just want you to look at it as it relates to the natural. I don't want you to just look at it uh, as it relates to the things that you just do on a day-to-day -day basis. I want you to kind of take a deeper look. I want you to take a look at it in relation to ministry. Amen. Okay, preacher, what do you mean? You've got to understand something. When Paul is sharing to Timothy that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. He's letting him know that God has put some stuff in you so that you can fulfill the purpose that God has put you here to fulfill. So I want you to take a look at this, this passage, not just in the natural, but I want you to look at this passage as it relates to being a child of God as it relates to being one that has been given an assignment, amen, from God, as one who has gifts and abilities that have been given by God himself, as one, amen, who has the Holy Spirit living within them, amen, to fulfill God's will for your life, amen, and praise the Lord. So you've got to understand, this is not just, amen, 
to try to get you yourself, amen, amen, boost you up to a point to where you make moves for you, you've got to understand this passage is showing us that God has invested some stuff in us. He's blessed us with some stuff. He's given us some gifts. He's given us purpose, amen, to fulfill his will, amen, in our lives and to do ministry, to honor his name, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and to be a blessing, amen, to the body of Christ and also to others, amen. So I want us to look at it as it relates to, amen, being encouraged, being encouraged in, in ministry. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you've got to understand something. He's telling Timothy, he says, Timothy, yes, amen, you're a young minister, but amen, God has given you some things to fulfill the task that, guess what? He put you here to do. Now watch. Don't just, amen, limit your task or those things that God wants us to do. Don't just limit it, amen, to what the preacher does. Don't, don't just limit it, amen, to what those do, amen, with instruments to encourage people. Don't just limit it, amen, to certain things. No, God gives gifts. He gives abilities in all different areas, the area of teaching, the area of leading, the area of encouragement, amen, the area of mercy, the area of giving. That's just some of the areas. So you've got to understand that God has given us some things so that we do not walk in this world as though, number one, we have no purpose, but Lord have mercy, we don't walk as if we have uh, no power. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we've got to understand that and we've got to get that in our spirit. So he told Timothy, he said what? He said, God has not given you the spirit of fear. And when you look at that whole word fear, it just means cowardice or fearfulness. So you've got to understand this one thing. Now watch, don't misinterpret it. It doesn't mean that you'll never get scared. It's just saying that you do not live a life in fear Amen. And anxiety and in worry and worrying about this and worrying about that. When you have a God in heaven who's given you everything you need, amen, to live with confidence and power in this world. Now watch, don't get it twisted. You may have some moments in your life where you may have some failures, fake failures, and you may have some times, amen, when you get to a point to where you're not to where you once was. But you've got to understand this one thing. This is talking about how God is not put in us to walk around and, as though we're defeated, as though he hadn't placed nothing in us, as though we have no power. Amen. So he's saying, Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Watch me now, but of power. Amen. Now watch this. I want you to understand something. I want to ask you, I want you to ask yourself this question. What are you being controlled by? Oh Jesus. I'm going to ask you one more time. What are you being controlled by? Okay, preacher, help me out. You've got to understand this one thing. He's letting Timothy know God has given you power, love, and a sound mind. He's given you some things, and he's given you some things to be led by, controlled by, and moved by to have your being. So you should be led by having power, love, and a sound mind, and not by fear. I want to help somebody on tonight. Many people never grow. Many people never do ministry. Many people never allow themselves to be used by God because they're walking in fear. Stuck because you don't understand.
understand that God wants to use you more than you think you can be used. But it's going to take you understanding. It's not your power. <laughs> It's not your might. It's not what you can do. I want to help somebody. When you tell yourself, I can't do it, you're not lying. <laughs> All right? You're not lying. No, you can't. But God, amen, God can. And what he's placed within you will give you the ability to say these words. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. Amen. And praise the Lord. So it's not a, how strong you are. It's not how smart you are. It's not about how powerful you are. It's not all the things that you've done for yourself. It is what God has put in you. Amen. To strengthen you. And give you the ability. To do the things that you're able to do. In his name. Amen. So he has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power. If we were together, I'd say, let the church say power. Well, what is power, pastor? Power is just ability. Amen. Ability. Amen. I want to help somebody on tonight. God has given us power. He's given us the ability, gifts to do things. I want to help somebody. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in trying to live up to somebody else's ability. Don't allow yourself to begin to get jealous of other folk because of what they can do. Can I help somebody on tonight? No matter what God has given you the ability and the power to do, can I help you? It is no different. It is no better. It is no worse than what somebody else has. It just says you have a different assignment. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you've got to know your assignment. Amen. You've got to know what God has put you here to do. You've got to know what he's empowered you to do. And you walk in it. And don't apologize for walking in the gift that he's placed within you, right? Power, ability, amen. And guess what? He'll allow you to walk in it in such a way to where you're not arrogant, but you're confident and knowing that this is what God called me to do. This is what he's given me the ability to do. I know God has gifted me to do this and Lord, I'm going to walk in it, amen. And I'm not going to apologize but you've got to make sure you give credit to God as being the one who allowed you to do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as Christians, we got to stop walking around like we're powerless. Amen. Praise the Lord. Like we're not worth anything. Amen. Like we don't have nothing to offer. Amen. That is a lie straight from the pits of hell. Amen. Praise the Lord. And when those moments come and when those thoughts come, you know you're being attacked. Amen. Praise the Lord. How you know that, Pastor? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here we go. He says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. I want to help somebody on tonight. When you take a look at love, oh, Jesus, sometimes <laughs> loving ain't easy. Amen. Sometimes loving others is not easy. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you've got to understand that with what God gives, he'll allow you to love those who love you and those who don't love you. He'll allow you to love a perfect stranger and even those living in your house. He'll allow you to love those who live in multi-million dollar homes and even love those who live, amen, and are homeless. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you've got to understand, in order to do God's will and to do his work and to go his way, Paul was letting Timothy know, Timothy, he's giving you love because you need love. If you're going to do the will of God, you've got to have love. What do you mean, preacher? You've got to be able to help your fellow man. You've got to be able not to judge people. Amen. You've got to be able to help folk that may not even help you if you would need help. You've got to be able to go beyond and above your emotions at the moment to guess what? Understand that God gave me love in my heart to represent. 
says, God is love. <laughs> amen. And the Bible says this. How can you say, amen, you love God who you've never seen, but hate your brother who you see daily. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you've got to get that in your spirit. God has given us love. You need love. If you're going to do ministry, you need love. If you're going to represent God, you need love. <laughs> if you're going to do the will of God, you need love. If you're going to help others, you need love. Amen. You cannot honor God without having love. That's why Paul told Timothy, what? Of power and of, and of love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Watch it now. Check it out. It doesn't just say of power. It doesn't just say of love, but it also says of a sound mind. Oh, Jesus. I pray a man that blesses somebody on tonight. He gives you a sound mind, but I want to help you understand something. That sound mind is not accomplished by you doing all the right things. Amen. That sound mind a man comes from yielding to the spirit of God. Oh, Jesus. Why? How you know that, preacher? God has not given us, oh, Jesus, a spirit of fear. But he's given us power. He's given us a spirit of love. He's given us a spirit of a sound mind. So what you got to understand is God will give you. Woo! what you need, amen, to be able to handle the things that you're going through. Quit trying to figure everything out. <laughs> Quit trying to think you got to know everything. Quit trying to think that you got to have it all figured out. No, just trust in Jesus and say, Lord, I don't have all the pieces. I don't quite know everything, but I do know this one thing. You got all power in your hands, and I'm going to trust, lean, <laughs> And depend who, on you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen with me on tonight. Amen. He'll give you that self-control. Amen. He'll give you that moderation. He'll give you peace. Even in the midst of a storm. You've got to get that. Right? So the Lord will give you a sound mind. You need all three. Why? In order to do good ministry, because you're going to need to be able to think clearly. You're going to need to be able to have peace. You're going to need to be able to see things through to the end in order, amen, to do effective ministry, in order to do it God's way. But if you don't rely on what God gives you and you begin, what, leaning to your own power and understanding, can I help somebody on tonight? You're going to fail, and you're going to fail miserably. Lord, have mercy. I want to help somebody on tonight. Tonight is the night when you fall on your knees. Amen. And you go to God and say, God, I know who you are. God, I surrender. God, you've given me power, love, and a sound mind. Lord, I want to walk in power, love, and a sound mind, Lord. I don't want the world. It's circumstances and events to dictate to me how I'm going to live. No, I'm going to walk according to what you gave me, Lord. It's time for somebody on tonight to let go. Amen. Give it up and turn loose and give it to God. Amen. And understand that he's giving you some stuff. Amen. To handle, to handle some things. Amen. And you placing your faith in Christ. Amen. You can experience these things. Amen. And one thing you've got to understand, when you look at Christ and you look at his life, amen, Christ displayed all of these things. Power, love, a sound mind. <laughs> right? He was able to do great ministry. Amen. He was able to do great works. He had love because even on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He had a sound mind that even though he knew he had individuals around him 
that didn't mean him any good. He was still able to fulfill his purpose. People of God, can I help you? God wants us to walk around as though we have power. He wants us to know and have love. He wants us to have a sound mind or self-control. Why? Because we represent him and we represent the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wait a minute, preacher. So what you trying to tell me? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you this. When you look at power, love, and the sound mind, that's a given. <laughs> How can you say that? Because you know that's what God gave you. See, you've got to understand something. That as Christians, that's what we should be known for. Amen. If somebody says, oh, that's a Christian. Amen. They got power, love, and the sound mind. That's a given. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So you've got to understand that really and truthfully, when we walk in the will of God, and we allow God to use us, and we allow God to minister to us, and we realize that all of our help and our strength comes from God, we can walk in victory. We can walk in triumph, not saying, amen, you don't care about nothing. No, it's just saying that my trust and my hope, amen, is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. You know who holds your hand and you know who's given you what you need, amen, to do his will. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Amen. I just came by to encourage you on tonight. I pray you were blessed in some kind of way on tonight. Amen. And my prayer is that you begin walking in victory, that you begin walking in power, love, and a sound mind, and that you would walk in such a way to where God will literally blow your mind as to what he can do with you and what he can do through you. Amen. The devil wants to discourage you. The enemy wants to distract you. The enemy wants to steal your worth. But God says, I put something in you. Amen. And I put something in you. Amen. To represent the kingdom of God. And represent it in a way, Lord have mercy, that will honor God Almighty. Amen. Amen. If you love God on tonight and you're glad for the sacrifice that Christ has made on your behalf and you know he rose the third day in victory, amen, over sin and death, give God some praise on tonight, amen, amen, and honor his name, amen, because he is worthy, amen. I want to pray, amen, a closing prayer on tonight, and I'm going to let you go on tonight. Let us pray. Lord, thank you. We love you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for using me. Thank you for using Christopher. Thank you for all the people who are tuned in. Lord, help us, dear God, to move forward in power, love, and a sound mind. Use us as you see fit. We thank you, Lord. We praise you and we love you. Pray for those who are sick. Heal them. Pray for those who are lost, Lord. Help them to be found. Help those who are confused, Lord. Help them, Lord, their minds to be regulated. We pray, Lord, right now that you would just have your way. We love you, we thank you, and we give you honor and glory. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen again. Love you, saints of God. Good night, y'all. Amen. Uh, uh, Lord willing, Sunday morning, amen, 10.30 a.m., amen. We'll have live and in-person service. God bless you real good is my prayer. Amen. And don't forget, don't forget, amen, to honor, amen, to honor Dr. King and all his accomplishments, amen, and all you do. Because we know he's not to be worshipped, but we know that he did so much. He did so much for us to experience many of the things that we enjoy. And he was a servant of God. Amen. Many people, they don't add that. He was a servant of God. He fulfilled his purpose. Right? He was a servant of God. And so, you know, honor him. Amen. And just let your children know the sacrifice that he made. And you remember the sacrifices that he made 
as well. Amen. God bless you real good. Love your saints of God. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Bye, y'all.